This week is all over the place, let me tell you. That's why I said you can make some big, big shoulder fun. I don't know, these things only happen to us. And you have to maintain your racking like you would your vehicles, your foot with trucks and anything else like that. You know what they say, if you want a job done properly, do it yourself. It's an absolute nightmare. It thinks it's on the nerve ring, but it's not. I know they like to get a bit arty-farty with their colour names. Sandy! Famous and dangerous, wicked and bad. Madness. KBT Weekly episode 23. Right, this week, nothing changes from last week. We're gonna continue on the maintenance of the warehouse. I've gotta pop over to DNR Racking. We're gonna go collect the van from Volkswagen. That's finally done. I hope you guys enjoyed last week's vlog. Again, big shout out to Human Relief Foundation. I will be traveling to Lebanon with these guys in a couple of months. So you all met Santi on our Barcelona vlog when we went out to film the Son of Must TV ad. He's actually flew in this morning. He's got a show on at the London XL. It's a horse show. He's doing what he loves. So we are gonna try our best to go and support him from the sidelines. We are gonna go and meet him over the weekend as well. We're gonna go out for some dinner. But yeah, we'll see where the rest of the week takes us. But for now, we've got plenty to do. Before Armour came this morning, I've, I've managed to print all the orders, get all the boys prepped for the day. So first up's first, we're gonna go and pick up the caddy van from Volkswagen. That's now been repaired. I don't know what you guys made of that clip last week, but it's absolutely ridiculous. Apparently the windscreen wasn't molded properly at our factory. I don't know, these things only happen to us. You know, I don't know what's going on with Volkswagen. And another qualm I've got with Volkswagen is my Mark AR 2021 car doesn't have a gas strut. So when I lifted the bonnet, I thought, yo, this bonnet's a bit heavy. And then I realized it doesn't have an actual gastro. It's got the old, you know, like the 1990s thing that you hook onto the bonnet. Honestly, bewildering that Volkswagen have done that. Anyway, that emission scandal a few years ago has obviously cost them a lot of money. So uh, they're trying to save money where they can. And clearly with all their new products, they're not up to the usual Volkswagen standard, which I am very disappointed about. I have made my feelings clear with the dealership. There are little niggly bits that are wrong with the Golf. For example, the passenger heated seat doesn't stay on. The sat-nav unit is very, very fragile. It, it likes to freeze on itself. Sometimes the reverse camera works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the parking sensors work, sometimes they don't. Anyway, we're wasting time talking about nonsense things that cost money. Let's go and try and make some money today, hopefully, inshallah. Van door's looking good. Right, first things first, we're gonna go drop off this Vauxhall combo van. The irony, Volkswagen have given us a Vauxhall to drive around in, but anyway, we're going to go drop off this Vauxhall van back to Volkswagen, pick up the caddy van and then we're going to head straight to Leicester. I'm thinking of buying this transporter for KBT Media Team because the colours match their personality. Colourful. We'll definitely consider one of these in a few years time for our next Pakistan journey. Look at this arm, driver's seat, spins round, faces the passengers. What rain? Hopefully there's nothing further to talk about. They've put a new windscreen on the van. Should have rectified the leak. Right, we've got the van back. Man like Ray has hooked us up with a new windscreen. So as I just said, we've had a new windscreen. We've had a new bulkhead because Ray had a look at it. He said it was vibrating. So they've changed that as well. Or they've tightened it, I'm not sure which one. But one thing I'm disappointed in, the windscreen they've put on is not a genuine one and he reckons it's genuine, but I'm saying it's not because it doesn't have a Volkswagen stamp on it. I just walked around the forecourt showing him that all these new vans, they have a Volkswagen stamp right here, but this one doesn't. I know I'm being picky, but I paid for a genuine part. Even though I didn't pay for this, it's under warranty. But anyway, let's hope this does what it's supposed to be doing and doesn't leak anymore. We do gotta get on because we've got the guys waiting in Leicester for us. So let's head out. Right, just got back from Leicester. We had to shoot there and shoot straight back as this stock is actually going to Cambridge as well as the 3000 meters, which is just behind us. Our usual driver's off but Dad's found another gentleman who's in this van who will be taking the stock to Cambridge. Two sets of deliveries. One which you guys kindly picked up from Leicester. Am I right? Yeah, right. So that one's got loaded into the next one. But other than that, that's about it, mate. Vans are loaded. Together, it's come three, four thousand meter. So this was already come today as well. We put it, but we didn't know the big roll gonna come after. So he was thinking he's going to be whole small, 
So that roll is like maybe 100 kg, the other one, biggest one. So if we are two people, but we don't want to kill ourselves for 100 kg to put it on the shelves. So it's easy to put it here. So this is how we do. The quilted machine is working, but I don't have that much delivery because I done most of job before. I done everything like imagine say somebody asked for 20 meter, I do 60 meter. I leave the other for warehouse. So I done it that way. That's why I have more time for warehouse now because the warehouse need to be clean up and everything have to be tied. So that's why this guy come with me. So he's new, he don't know like where to keep it and he don't know how to plan it. So I have to plan it with Saj and then come here and Faris as well. So we work hard as a team. So you know what happened, yeah? I was proud of myself too much. And like I said, I'm picking heavy, heavy weights. So Friday, I got headache. Saturday, a little bit ill. Monday, sleeping. So never go think forward of yourself, say, yeah, yes, I am. But small illnesses can make you sleep. And look at the henchman. He's, he's just thinking about the big rolls, how we're going to pick it up. But I have the, the good thing is, these rolls have hole inside. So we can put the metal in and hold it from each side, it's easy to pick it up. So this rolls is like each 200 meter and the weight of this one like 80, 90 kg. Some of them you get 120, 130. So if you don't have another partner with you, so just leave it there for a month. <laughs> yeah, it's too much heavy, bro. That's why I said you can make some big, big shoulder farm. <laughs> Me again. I'm up here now on, on this kick stool. Um, Trying to sort this shelf out. So we've got a lot of mess going on up here. Running out of space, it's time to go up. Really just for some choppers then, to do some chopping yeah. so we can get back into the mood of working again, Eddie. Eh? But I told you, uh, a couple of my boys, uh, they watch the KBT weekly, Eddie. Eh? So they're the ones that keep me up to date. This week is all over the place, let me tell you. There's things going on over there, there's things going on over there. I've got my own personal things to deal with, I've also got work to deal with. It's an absolute nightmare. We're actually on Wednesday. We did hardly any filming on Monday. We've done hardly any filming yesterday. Today is half a day. I've got to go get the racking. I have to get the racking today by hook or crook. I need to get that shelf put up. I'm going to disappear in the afternoon. I've got a few personal things to attend to. Tomorrow's the exact same thing. But regardless, even if this is a 10 minute vlog, it's coming out. It's going to become a YouTube short, KBT YouTube short. Oh, in other news, I received an email from YouTube this morning. And it actually made me smile. So this year, mashallah, we've had 1.6 million watch time minutes. We have 126,000 views across the channel. And my most viewed video is number three, which is KBT Weekly, work hard, play hard. But I want to just thank all you guys. You guys make this possible. All right, let's jump in the van. We're going to DNR racking. We're going to go pick up the racking for the side. I'm supposed to do this last week. I'm supposed to do this at the start of the week. Just can't seem to get around to do it, man. But let's get in the van. Let's get this job done. Yes, Judge? 102. 102, yeah? All right. Yeah. Okay, nice one. Forgot Sad was on the phone. We just turned up to DNR Racking here in Tisley. I've just been in. I've just spoke to the boys. I've seen the beams that we want. So thankfully they're at the front. Come with me. I'll let David explain a bit more about what he does. So basically we buy and sell industrial racking. Any company expanding or redesigning the layout of the warehouse, wanting to create more space, get more product inside. We redesign the layout of the racking in the place. We buy and sell a whole range of used kits. Um, I suppose nowadays companies need to be uh, up to scratch with health and safety, so we do safety inspections. Um, and you have to maintain your racking like you would your vehicles, your forklift trucks and everything else like that. I found the beams that I want. Thankfully, as I say, they were right at the front. 
So these are 2.6. Ideally, I needed 2.8, but beggars can't be choosers. I'm going to use this. That means that the frame will just be shorter. This frame that we're going to put up on this side will be slightly shorter than the one behind it, which is absolutely fine. It doesn't matter. Hopefully, with that, we can put up one, two, three, four, five shelves. Finally, get that shelf put up and get that long overdue job finished. Right, so we've got the 1.7s and we've got the 2.6. Big thank you to DNR Racking here in Tisley. Make sure you guys come and check them out for all your racking needs. Right, let's head on to the next job. Just up the road, I gotta go pick up the fan. Right, so we're at the next job. We're at Advanced Electrical Services. We're just with Jay here. We dropped off the fan heater to get rewound. We, we gave the pricing for the rewind, but the man wanted to go for a new unit instead. So he, he sorted that himself personally. But yeah, we do do rewinds. We can source new motors. We do all different stuff, electrically and mechanical. Uh, ele electrical rewinds, when you take the copper out and uh, you, you count all the turns, you replace it with the copper, the same gauge, same turns. So then you just basically, it's kind of a new motor, but refurbished and then it's same electrical current and the ampage. Yeah, big thank you to Jay. So, yeah, as he said, Sad just found a new motor, which is significantly cheaper than what it would cost to actually have that rewound. But it's not always the case. Sometimes it does work out a lot cheaper to have it rewound rather than go out and buy a new unit. But in this case, we have found one cheaper. So good firm. Make sure you guys come and check them out. They're also based here in Tisley, not far from where we were just now at DNR. Yeah, if you need anything, any electrical work doing, make sure you come and shout Jay. We're gonna make a pallet. So we've got some rolls going uh, abroad. They're quite long rolls and they're quite a few of them. So we need a pallet which has got sides on it so they don't fall off. We've got to find a nice, decent, strong pallet. Come here. Something that will last all the way and not fall apart. I think we need to get rid of all these pallets. There's too many here. Too many broken ones. sides on the pallet. Need four sides so we can put the rolls in there so they don't fall off. You know what they say, if you want a job done properly, do it yourself. And that's what's happening right here. I'm doing it myself. Always buy a decent saw. Barcoat. Price cut. 9.99 from your local builder store. Bosch bill. Don't show this to my wife because she'll have me doing all the DIY at home. secure a bit more higher so inshallah i'm gonna finish packing this off right we've got a last minute job to warwick castle and we haven't got a driver so it looks like i'm back on my taxi runs again so we've got approximately thousand meters going out to spain it's one of our good customers she always buys off us regularly every couple of months sad has obviously made this pallet which you guys seen before all right now you crack on armor let's head out because we need to be with Dave in the next half an hour so I don't know how that's possible because Warwick Castle is about an hour away We've just turned up to Warwick Castle. I'm just gonna try and find Dave. I did say he was in car park three, I believe. So I'm just gonna find somewhere to park up and then I'll give him a call. Right, I am at the first car park on the left as you come in through the Stratford okay. Road entrance. Stay, stay there a few minutes. Um, first car park on the right. Yeah, so uh, 
Bay 9, yeah, that exactly, yeah. yeah. Just, just stay there, I'll ring you in a few minutes. So you all heard him. We're gonna park up here somewhere. So we're just in Bay 9 car park. As you just heard, we spoke to Dave and he's asked me to wait here for a few minutes. Yeah, we're just gonna sit here and twiddle our thumbs until we get the phone call from Dave. Two very boring minutes later. No, that's not Dave. Five minutes later. I would have thought there'd be a lot more traffic than there was, but no. Excuse me. Approximately ten hours later. Anyway, so we're going to drop this parcel off to Dave. There's an event here at Warwick Castle. We can't tell you too much. Dave did say to keep my mouth shut. Thousands of tears later. We're just waiting for Dave. We're going to unload the van and then we're going to head back towards KBT. So if you do end up at Warwick Castle and you do see any fabric, just know it's from KBT. But we're currently stuck on the M40 uh, behind motorway maintenance. So I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe there's an accident up front or something has happened. But life of a glorified van driver. Hey. Gavin, tell him how multi talented I am. I've got him on the uh, machine, the sewing machine. He said he could stitch, so I've got him on there. He's a little bit out. He thinks he's on the Nurbu ring, but it's not. He's on a sewing machine. You can take a break yeah. while I do this. So we're just stitching these two fabrics together. This is a four ounce waterproof fabric with a camo design on it. We do this in a range of about six to seven different colors. Suitable for umbrellas, raincoats, aprons, you name it. Anything to do with the outdoors, click the link in the description below. We're actually joining these two fabrics together because Abdul will be putting this on the quilting machine as soon as I'm finished doing this last bit of stitch. So if you don't mind me, there's a roll underneath, which is however many meters, and there's a roll on top, which is however many meters. And obviously there's a join in between that will actually upset the quilting machine. So we're going to put a stitch together. So when it feeds through, it will quilt as one long piece. If that makes any sense. If it doesn't, call me. 0121 359 2349. Bargains galore and a whole lot more. Any complaint, just say Abdul no good. <laughs> we got Paris on the on the quilting run today. Huh? Well I should say joining run. Quilting's coming next, isn't it Paris? The verdict is if you can see the, that fabric is there and that fabric is there. Aye, we're about this. a mile out. Aye, we're out here. Side, look at this side and on that there. side, the fabric's in. Amir, come and show them this, please. Luckily. Bloody hell. Luckily. <laughs> We're gonna fix it. He should have feathered the pedal. <laughs> he was full throttle. So look at this. Invisible thread you use that on that side. When you go too quick, this is what happens. You make mistakes. So you know what it is, yeah? I was in first gear here. Then I like, I shot into, straight into third gear Not here. Not very straight, is it? And then here, I was doing the total eclipse. <laughs> I was doing the 190s on the autobahn. <laughs> I'm Saj. This is KBT Weekly. And I'm out of here. And I'm Faris. And you watch it KBT Weekly, I'm also out of here. You join us on a Thursday morning. We're just loading the van up. We've got 10,000 meters going to London. But funny enough, I'll be heading to London as well a little later on in the afternoon, not in the van. I'll just lock it up and uh, speak to my dad. I think his son's going to London. Yeah, right, what was I saying, right? We're gonna go over towards CVS Hire. They're a car hire firm based here in Birmingham. But we'll catch up with them a little later on when we head over there. But for now, the Palais for Spain is ready. We're gonna wait for the courier to come and pick that up and then that can go out. As I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, we just want to get everything sorted before the end of the year, before we break up for the Christmas holidays. We've got to make sure all the orders for this year are sorted and done. Why am I going to London? It's a bit nosy, isn't it, mate? Huh? Armour has asked me a question, why am I going to London? Armour already knows, but I think he was a, it was a bit of a forward question for me to answer to you guys. I'm going to London today because I've been invited to an event with Abid. Abid from Sunna Musk. It's actually the HRO in Lamborghini event, so I'm Abid's plus one. I'm his bird for tonight. Abid's flying in from Dubai. I'm gonna pick him up from Heathrow Airport and then we're gonna head into central London. 
<laughs> I'd love to take KBT Media with me, but unfortunately, we're going in a two-seater car, so it's only going to be me and Abid. But, and here's the but, I will be taking the GoPro with me. I will try and do a little bit of filming if I can. I'm not sure how good I will be with the camera, but as I say, I will try and film bits and bobs of it and maybe we could put it in. It's uh, Thursday, Spain order, it's been packed, it's ready to go. The only thing is now, because of Brexit and all that, so much paperwork involved. There's one form, there's a VAT form, a Brexit form. They want to know the, the gross weight of the whole thing, dimensions, I've got to be accurate. So, roughly worked it out, rough sort of estimate, there's about eight, eight rolls, about 40 meters on each roll, weigh about 10, 10 kg each, eight rolls, 80 kg, and... A lot of boring math later. Just shy of under 100 kg. International, I had a, they used to be all right, they used to be easy, straightforward, simple, like domestics, but because of Brexit, it's an absolute nightmare. Just in the uh, dispatch department here, just sorting out an order. I've got uh, some of these RB45s. They're for the Alpha Cutter, 45 millimeter blade. 10 in a pack, I've got some of these going out. Right, it's just gone one o'clock, we've just turned up to CVS. Now CVS is a group of companies which involve accident management, also car hire and also taxi replacement. As you can see behind me, there's two lovely Rolls Royces and a Q7, which are all available for either self-drive or chauffeur driven. So for the car hire arm of the business, they offer sports cars, luxury vehicles, prestige vehicles, like the Rolls Royces just behind me, like the Q7 behind me. They've got Lamborghinis, which are outside, we'll show you in just a second. They're also highly involved in the accident management. Say for example, God forbid, if you have an accident, especially if it's not your fault, these guys will deal with the claim from start to finish. They've been going for several years now. I know these guys very well. They're very close to me. We will leave a link in the description below with all their details. Faisal, come through. How are you? You okay? Good to see you, bro. This is Faisal, everybody. He's the MD here at CVS Group. What are saying about this Lambo, man? And just behind us here are all the cars that have come in for accident repair, uh, any management work that we spoke about earlier. As you see, there's a lovely Golf R here, which has had an unfortunate front end accident, but uh, I'm sure Faisal and his team will uh, get that look in spick and span and brand new back for the customer. Right, as you can see behind me, we've got a Lamborghini Huracan here finishing a beautiful orange. I'm not sure the exact Lamborghini color. I know they like to uh, get a bit arty farty with their color names. This is one of the sports cars available to hire from CVS. Give them a call and make sure you guys let them know that I sent you. Send it. No, 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 no. We're going to need CVS assist otherwise. Right, I've managed to uh, twist Faisal's arm and he's chucked me the keys to the Lamborghini. He goes, you can have it for the day. Just reciprocating some of the business. So yeah, man, it does pay off. Camera's paying off as well. KBT Weekly, we managed to put CVS in as well. Make sure you guys come and check these guys out, man. They're good people. But that's everything from us at CVS. We'll see you guys later on. feels really weird doing it myself I really really miss it your armor just filled up the car we're gonna head out we're gonna join the M40 and then first pit stop is Heathrow Airport to pick up I don't know if you guys can see me because I look really dark all right let's get this show on the road
Okay, guys. <laughs> I feel so weird holding this camera, I swear to God. Armour, I don't know how you do this, bro. All right, we'll try that again because the file got corrupted. Anyway, guys, we've just arrived at Heathrow Airport. I'm just waiting for Abid to come out. Oh, this might be Abid now. No, I checked his flight on arrivals and he should be arriving any minute now. He hasn't got much luggage, so he should be straight out after security. But uh, we're just here at the Radisson Blue Hotel, which is just outside Terminal 3 Heathrow Airport. Um, that's the hurricane just behind me. Big up to my brother Faisal from CVS Hire for chucking me the keys to this hurricane. It's been an absolute dream of a drive down, let me tell you. Um, these Lambos, man, they're, they're, they're setting house, trust me. I mean, the M5, the M5's in its own league, but for pure excitement, for pure rush, all of that, you can't beat a Lambo, you know what? You know what the funny thing is, yeah? This guy waited an hour for me, but he still managed to pick me up late. How? <laughs> How is that possible? You know man? what? I seen a shell, I thought, you know what? I might as well tank the car up. No point <laughs> stopping again, whatnot, whatnot. I thought you'd be you're going through security and you're going to take You know me, man's Hana Hana G. They let me Come free on, straight. I, was, I, forgot, I forgot I'm dealing with man like Abid from someone must get it. Yeah, no security for this guy. <laughs> But now we've got Abid and now we're heading into central London and hopefully uh, straight to the event, yeah? Yeah, yeah, straight to the event, mate. How was your flight? It's good, man. It's good. Uh, about a seven hour flight. How was the flight? Not too bad. No, it was really good, man. I ain't gonna lie. You know what? I thought I'm gonna fully bored by myself here, yeah, but it was actually all right. Yeah? I got a lot of things done. Well, a few of the mandem out there, anyway. Yeah, a few of the mandem out there and one thing is like, I actually got things done, you get me? No distraction. Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. So we've just left the event. Uh, and we've just come into Jamabar and we've man like Shaf and obviously Mr. High Flyer nah, bro, nah, coming nah, after nah, business nah. class A380 <laughs> and that uh, straight into the Lambo. We just had to quickly hop into Jamabar. Yeah. Mayfair and that. We're just oh, in Mayfair. It's recommended by you, so let's see let's see what he's saying bro. Well I came here about a year ago. So I wouldn't really say it's a recommendation <laughs> for me. Nah, nah, bro. <laughs> to weekly what's happening it's friday and it's just gone three o'clock i've just walked into work unfortunately got back very late yesterday from london uh Saj and my dad are very displeased i'm gonna try to keep it low-key and try to avoid the gaffers because uh they're not happy with me whatsoever but regardless yesterday was a good day met a couple of love island stars which i didn't know about but my boys were telling me that these lot are famous so i said all right do they know who I am? I'm famous too. Famous and dangerous, wicked and bad. Got a bit of free time. Tables fairly empty. So I thought me and Mo would rearrange all our shelving, organise it properly where we know what's coming, what's not. So every year, one of my dad's suppliers he always drops off a box of fruit. These are all grown in his garden. So you got some apples and you got some pears. So big thank you to Brian. Right, just having a look at what's ready to go out. But if we have a look at this, this is a python skin fabric. To make some dresses, perfectly ideal for clothing and light upholstery work. But yeah, we will leave a link in the description as always. So next up is one of our very popular winter fabrics. It's a Sherpa fleece fabric. Very, very cozy material. Can also be used to make blankets, can also be used to make bed toppers or a rug, you name it. It's a very, very luxurious, soft, Warm fabric, you know, on one of your long days, you could almost find a roll of this and just fall asleep on it. So next up is a car headliner fabric. You guys have seen this many times. As you know, I'm a car fanatic, so I love talking about our car fabrics. And this is something that I bought in myself many, many years ago. If you're a DIY person and you want to do it yourself, Fabric UK, man, we've got everything. Again, we will leave a link in the description below. So the next fabric up is a Sherpa fleece bonded now, I did mention just now previously about the Sherpa fabric, but that is only one side. Now, this is perfect if you want to make a jacket as it is fleeced on one side and then has the cream Sherpa, what you guys just seen on the inside. 
It's a very, very nice, luxurious fabric. Perfect for jackets. As always, we'll leave a link in the description. Right, guys, you join me in the stitching department. I've given Mahmoud a break. He's put his coat yeah. on, he's ready to go out. You going, Mahmoud? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem, I'll hold the fort here. Yeah. Right, listen, all jokes aside, we're making a bunch of curtains for a big hotel firm. This machine doubles up as a cutting machine and also an eyelet press machine. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So you might ask yourself, how do you know how far apart the eyelets should be, Faris? That's the job of this trusty thing here. This is actually what I call a spacer. When we cut the hole, we know to bring the fabric up to here and that's where the next cut will be. Give it a click. See? Pull that down, like so. And that is this curtain, ready to be eyeletted. I'm not gonna show you now because I've still got a lot of curtains that I need to cut the eyelet holes for. So we'll talk a bit about the fabric. So the actual fabric we're using for this job is upholstery velvet fabric. Now this fabric can be used for sofas, it can be used for headboards, beds. I always like to tell you that a particular fabric can be used in a hundred different applications. It's not always just made for one job. You can even do things which are abnormal, right? Like for example, stick fabric onto a wall. A lot of people do it these days with the Hessian. Just with Santi, just finished his show. Finished. Very good. Good watch. Never been to a horse show in my life before, but first <laughs> Thank time you so for much everything. For the show. Thank yeah. you. Madness. I've never been to a horse show before, but that was something different, man. Santi is too sick with the horse. From one onto the other, prancing around. I could just about get onto that horse, go back to episode 14, and watch me trying to climb that horse, and then watch Santi climb that same horse. We're just backstage, yeah, we're at Santi's stable. So as you can see, this is where the horses are kept overnight. And there's the main man, he's a bit busy, he's just checking his horse over. So we're just out here, main man Santi. I think he's getting changed. He's had a long show, long couple of days. Got Ferris here, look at his smile. I've never been in a stable before. We've got backstage passes with John Patton for us. So big up, even though we turned up two hours late. Santi's got his top off, but when he puts his clothes on, then we'll talk to him. Absolute legend. This is Santi Sira's brother, John Sira. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is my friend. Is <laughs> no, we are brothers. Ah, yeah, brothers. Yes. Oh, yeah. But, uh, brown brother and white brother, yeah? <laughs> so, yeah, man, good times. We're going to go out later. We're going to grab some food. And come all the way from Spain to do an artist show here at the London Horse Show. Uh, we just watched him. He just finished. Done a wicked job. Thank if you don't remember this guy, go back to episode 14 when we went to Santi's farm in Spain. Thank you so much for the visit. And for me, it's a very, very pleasure. My show in, in London. Uh, and this is an amazing show. In the middle of the competitions, the World Cup competitions. And it's the best, best, best important for me. It's your visits. Thank you so much. <laughs> His next show is about 7 o'clock. So we've got a couple of hours break. So we're gonna try and find a restaurant. And we do have to get some editing done. So I think what we'll do, yeah, we'll go grab some food, then we'll drop Santi back. So guys, you join us outside the Malmaison Hotel here in London. Just finished up from Santi. We went out, got some food. Just come to meet up with Abid from Sunan Musk. They want some of their chairs redoing. We've got samples here. So we're just gonna head on in and catch up with him, grab a coffee. As you know, these guys sent the city down to us to reupholster. Now, seeing as I was in London anyway, I was going to post it, but the save on the better postage. Kill two birds with one stone, I'm here anyway. So Abby's just gonna make a final decision and then we're gonna go back and get the work started. Hopefully, we can have it done. Thank you. Hopefully, we can have it done this side of Christmas. Uh, if not, it'll probably be in the new year, but I'm sure you guys are not in a mad nah, rush for it. Nah, we're not in it. Texture, feels nice, and I think it's the right color. Abid has chosen luxury upholstery velvet. Right guys, that's everything from this week. I've just finished up with Abid. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's vlog. And as always, we'll most definitely catch you again next week for episode 24.